happy to announce that um, that we are just signed a an ambassadorship program with Schedulicity. Schedulicity is a scheduling app, and um, they've been kind enough to uh, to help us out this next year. Yeah, they uh, we met them in LA when we did the uh, Salon Digital Summit, and they really believed in what we were doing mm-hmm. and how we were doing it, mm-hmm. and so they wanted to know how they can partner up with us to uh, to even reach more listeners and, exactly. and give what we give. That's that's right. So um, with our uh, with our partnership with uh, Schedulicity, we will be able to reach more hairdressers and we'll be able to bring a lot more content and get to a lot more hair shows. So uh, hopefully we can see you guys out there in the hair shows when we're there visiting. Yeah, and and they're going to give us a, some business tips uh, throughout the podcast as well. And I'm so excited that you know we're partnering up with people that believe in the same things we believe in. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, that that's pretty exciting. So, uh, anyway, Schedulicity once again, big shout out to you and uh, thank you for joining your day off, <laughs> silly. Hey, hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey, and I'm sitting with my bud Tony. What's up, Tony? What's up, bud? Hey, this uh, this is going to be kind of exciting because we we have someone that's kind of outside the industry but actually affects our industry i know it's crazy right yeah it's it's you know it's, it's like it's, an in-betweener yeah like exactly you know, like she supports our industry in such a such, such a unique way you know yeah and when we get into her story and later on figure out how much she impact it's crazy, our industry right? is pretty cool especially from one individual I know it's amazing. For two individuals, two actually. individuals, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but uh, you know, she's the ultimate collab worker, right? Like that's oh the big goodness. word. So yeah. you know, she's the one that collabs, and and she's just got. Um, I mean, she's she belongs in the industry because she has such an incredible like artistic eye, and, and, and the way she sees things is just crazy. Uh, yeah, and, and 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 for those who followed us since the beginning, uh, you guys are going to get a kick out of uh, Corey trying to say her last name. <laughs> oh man, you know so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and introduce. I, I can't wait for him to get to this. So I can't wait to introduce her. <laughs> Can I pass it off to you this time? <laughs> I, if you struggle, I'll pick it up. <laughs> Why? You're still going to just sit there and stare at me, watch me struggle. Anyway, so on today's podcast, and if you're not following this lady, you have to follow this lady um, on Instagram. Um, today, our guest is Darina Baritnik. <laughs> Barikana. 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 <laughs> Darina Barikana. Miss oh, Darina. Help you out. <laughs> See you a little bit. Miss Darina, thank you very much for joining us on your day off. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. And uh, you kind of nailed it. Almost, almost. It was so close. So close. Oh, yeah. She was over the pulling for me. Did you see her? She's like, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. I was cheering for you. <laughs> you. You were nailing it before the podcast. You were doing a pretty good job. On you it. put too much pressure on me, man. It was all you. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Oh, my God. So, Darina, uh, yes. where did you grow up? I am born and raised in Ukraine, Kiev. This is uh, where I'm from. Mm-hmm. And I moved to U.S. eight years ago. Eight years ago? Yes, in 2011. Yep. Wow. wow. Yeah. And where did you move to? Jacksonville, Florida. And I'm still here. <laughs> so, well, I have a couple questions. One, how do you find Jacksonville? But two, did you, um, did you speak English before you got here? Or is this like eight years of English? Well, no, um, we study English at school. It's uh, one of the um, foreign languages that we learn. I studied um, English and French at certain point in German. I only kind of stuck with, and Spanish too, but I stuck with English because I didn't pay much attention to the other languages. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I could, I could speak, but of course, well, when you are in the environment, it's nothing like learning English through the book. So of course I had to pick up so much. Uh, But why Jacksonville? It's an interesting story. Well, my dad acquired a small business here, and this is why um, my parents and I and my husband we moved here because of what he was doing, because of my father, literally. I was upset in the beginning because Jacksonville is like like, like a small town, you know, it's like really quiet. Um, But now I really appreciate it because with how much I travel and I see other cities, I just want to come back to come back home to a city that's like really chill and just relax. And so yeah, Jacksonville. So compare the winners of Ukraine and Jacksonville. Is mm-hmm. it are, are they similar or are they winters? The winters? Yeah, the winters, winters weather. 
Oh, um, I love Florida in general just because it is warm. <laughs> in yeah. Ukraine, our weather is more like New York type of weather. Uh, the only thing, um, w well, it gets cold starting with September and it gets warm starting with late April. So we have a big chunk of year just a just cold weather. Snow oh. and, and rain and, you know, all of that. So, so I'm happy to be in a place that's really warm. Is Kiev like, is it like, um, that's, that's the city, right, Kiev? That's the capital, yes. Yeah, so it's a big city then. So is it more like New York or is it like, like what's, what's the landscape there? It's a big city um, and a couple million people there for sure. But I think Ukrainian um, residential and business setup is similar more to Brazil than to United States. We don't have such thing as downtown. Like building wise, it's all approximately the same height. Um, and business and residential buildings, they look quite the same. But um, yeah, definitely it is a big and, and busy city and, um, you know, everybody wants to move to the capital of the country for more opportunities. So it's getting more and more overly populated. Awesome. Is your parents still in Jacksonville as well? Do they stay? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yes. My dad still owns that business and my mom is a registered nurse and I have two younger brothers. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wow. So you got a whole family right there in Jacksonville. No wonder you go like coming back to Jacksonville. <laughs> I know what's wrong with it, right? <laughs> no, it's you know, our listeners still have no clue what we're about to get into, which no. is kind of cool, right? I kind of dig that. So too. you know, they get to know Darina uh, as Darina before we get into into, you know, into, into her story. Yeah. Into, what What makes it relevant to our our industry? I yeah. think people do know though. That's what I'm saying. I am a beauty and advertising photographer, and for the past three years, I focused on hair, and this is how I got into the beauty industry and the hair side of it. So through photography. Oh, you, you, just, you just spoiled it for us. <laughs> oh, I was not I'm supposed joking. to say that. <laughs> no, you can't. Just, I don't know. I'm just joking. It's your time. Dude. Right. It's cool. So, I mean, know, like, go, ahead. go ahead. Oh, no. It's just something to warn you guys about. Um, since English is not my first language, sometimes I don't know how to translate humor. Like, I, so I take everything uh, way too seriously. So <laughs> don't be, you know, intimidated if I don't get a joke. It happens pretty often. But I try to get my sarcasm level higher. But it happens <laughs> my, gradually. Yeah, we would just be, yeah. None of my sarcasm. jokes are funny anyways. It doesn't matter. No, and you speak English a whole lot better than I do, so. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, I mean, so you're a photographer, so... Uh, when did you find an interest to it? Have you always shot? Did you, um, or is it something that you kind of picked up, you know, whenever? Tell us that journey. Um, I loved photography since I remember myself uh, from teenage years. And my parents saw like my passion for it and the fact that I can actually compose a shot. So they got me a first point and shoot. And I went to um, like Euro trip with a, a group of kids and I took pictures all around the Europe and my parents saw that, you know, somehow I can feel the, uh, the horizon line, you know, and people like placement of the people in the shot. They're like, you know, maybe you want to consider going to a photography school. So I started looking for photography school and um, this is how I got into photography. Um, my dad never wanted me to be a photographer. He wanted me to be a financial analyst. So my, uh, Primary education is uh, finance. I have bachelor's in finance and master's in business administration. So photography was just solely my thing that I did. Um, it was like an evening school. This is how oh. I was able to learn it simultaneously with the other. Stuff. So did your dad want you, wanted you to uh, come work with him? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, later on, we were working together. And yeah, I know why wouldn't he want me to work with him uh, to start with. It's hard to work with, with relatives, but I think he just, uh, you know, he was a businessman and he knew what was paying well in the market and he wanted the best future for me. That's why he encouraged um, my interest in finance and I didn't mind it. I could do it, but I just didn't feel any passion for it. I liked financial analyst, uh, analysis uh, because it's like being a doctor to a company. So you come to a company, you see what's wrong, you try to fix it. And it, it was interesting, but it was never like my passion. I didn't wake up thinking, oh my God, I'm just going to look at some a balance, you know, or, or a <laughs> debit and credit and see like what's, yeah. So, so have you been, so are, you're not doing that anymore? So it's, you're a hundred percent photography now? Uh, absolutely. And that was my goal uh, from the get go. It's just dad didn't know about it. <laughs> so, when we, so when we moved here, uh, I was married already. So I brought my husband here as well. And we moved at the time when the market kind of crashed. 
And the way my dad worked, um, his business had to do with, um, with construction and then construction slowed down drastically. So he needed help. And of course, entire family was helping him out with the business. So I had to do bookkeeping. I had to do um, sales. I worked probably on every single little branch of the, um, on every single position. Uh, but that was just solely to help him out. And um, later on, I had to resign like officially because he wouldn't let me go. Um, <laughs> it was the toughest thing I had to do in my life. Like one of the toughest things. Um, yeah, but I, I tried a little bit to work in the office. It was not for me, for sure. Yeah, I wanted to be a photographer. And every spare minute that I had, I was photographing on my days off and after work. So I knew that's what I want to make, um, what I want to turn into my career. But of course, I had to do what I had to do in the meantime and like pay my dues and support the family. Yeah. That's so cool. It's I beautiful, like actually. I mean, that, you know what I mean? That's what family does, right? Yeah, exactly. That's and that, that's. Your father or your family's uh, obviously very close, and uh, kind of reminds me of my family. I have I have a daughter that she is such a daddy's girl, and you know what I mean. She, yeah, it, you just you know, you just was tugging on my heartstrings there. You, you tugged them I mean? a little bit there. Yeah, that's Maria. that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> How did you? I, I guess it, it, your composition is just natural. Like, is it is it? It's just something you've always seen. Like when you look through the viewfinder i think so i think you know there's a piece of or like a grain of talent that you're born with like your natural understanding of things oh yeah but that grain had to be worked on a lot so it's not like it came really natural to me and i feel like in my life nothing really did i'm the kind that had to work for it or maybe i just underestimate amount of of talent or whatever you want to call it it was given to me but yeah i definitely worked on my photography in order to take it where it is right now because you know there's there's uh, different sides to it there's a uh, photography you know the the camera there's lighting there's retouching so you have to learn a bunch of things what did you find most challenging <sighs> um making other people ideas come to life like that's probably challenging because that's a communication thing I have my own opinion. I'm quite um, opinionated when it comes to mm -hmm. photography. <laughs> I know what I like. When it's good, I can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just making sure that uh, specifically for hairdressers, because they are so artistic and they, you know, they have these visions. And my goal on my end, I have to make sure their vision is fulfilled. So sometimes it's not even about me at all. You know, it's just my ability to make their ideas um, come to a uh, visual aspect, like materialist materialize um yeah so it's communication part is the, probably the toughest figuring out what people actually want to be portrayed it's like a hairdresser yeah, pretty much i mean it's like a you know the consultation and stuff, yeah when the know? client comes in and they tell you what they want and then you gotta bring that to life well i would also think though too like Dorina definitely has a look right like if, if you're scrolling your feed and you see one of her images you know she's she's patented that look you know so i guess if you're a hair stylist and you're seeking you better want Dorena's look, right? right like, yeah. like if not, you're not using her to the best of her ability either. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You got to use her, her God given talent, you know what I mean? Her eye mm -hmm. to enhance your vision. Exactly. And your vision should, should also, you should pre see it as in her vision as well. Right. And if you want to win a Naha award, you reach out for Dorena. <laughs> she helped two people. <laughs> two people. She got two Naha awards under her belt. Which is pretty incredible, you know. That's impressive, right? And she's only been shooting what she said three years, three years, right? Like, yeah, in the hair industry. So I'm quite fortunate to be working with such talented people. That's for sure. So yeah. three years, two two winners. That's two winners. Yeah, two. That's two separate years. That's well, it, great. well, we uh, like we have a relationship with Sarah Jane, and Sarah Jane just won the 2019 Naha Award. What what style and finish? Style and finish. So, Jarena, tell me about that. I mean, you guys. Um, I know you mentioned off air that you guys are friends and stuff, but how did that come about? Well, uh, Sarah always wanted to try Naha, but I think as any artist, you just doubt yourself so much. She was slightly hesitant. And um, myself, I'm extremely competitive. So um, I'm very hesitant when it comes to my own stuff, but when it comes to like standing ground for somebody else creatively, oh yeah, like I can totally do it for you. I'll push you off the cliff. <laughs> like, <yay. laughs> I think that's what happened with Sarah. And um, she had this one idea initially, and you know, in, in a conversation, she'll, you know, elaborate more on that. But um, then she had to kind of give up on that idea. And since she had everything lined up, she had to uh, 
actually make the shoot happen. So we were coming up with things on the spot. And you know, the thing is, sometimes preparation is key. Like you really want to be prepared. But sometimes just throwing yourself in a very stressful situation makes you think so much faster. And I think that's what happened to her. She had to create things on the spot and she delivered. And the thing is, I think that collection is really true to who she is as a hairdresser, as an artist. And probably, it's my assumption, she maybe would have overthought it if she was overly prepared. Probably because it was so stressful for her, she was able to just go for it, just do do her, you know, instead of like considering so many other factors. Yeah. You know what's interesting about that is that um, a couple months ago we had Matt Sweeney on and Matt said that when he goes into his, um, he's won an AHA a couple of times too. Um, but when he goes into his shoots, he doesn't go in with an idea. Yeah, he said the exact same thing. You're exactly. Right. And he just he said, you know, whatever the hair tells me to do, that's what we're going to do that day. And it, it's clearly been successful for him because he's won a few times, right? Yeah, and, and as an artist, you know what I mean? You, you're, just, you're just rolling with what the hair's given you. And you, you know, obviously you have a, a super strong foundation as Sarah has. You know what I mean? She kind of has just just – not everybody has that natural given talent, you know what I mean? She, but, I mean, yeah, she's exactly. off the charts naturally. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but yeah. So how did you guys meet or how did you guys connect? Um, we met through um, a common friend, um, Erica Keelan. She's the owner of um, Studio Sage here in Jacksonville. Uh, I think it's the only hybrid salon here in town. Uh, by hybrid, I mean it's the working salon and a working photography studio, and this is where I reside <laughs> for oh, the wow. most part. Yeah. So um, Erica, somehow she uh, knew Sarah Jane, and then we collaborated on the project. We all met. And I think um, like one of the big signs for me personally uh, telling me whether or not we'll do well together as a team is like how do we click and connect and bounce ideas off of each other. And sometimes when speaking of collaboration, somebody has to like step down a little and let somebody else step in and, you know, shine. So that dynamic really tells me if we can be um, working effectively. So that first collaboration went smooth, uh, uh, what is it? Smooth, uh, seamless, <laughs> smoothless. Um, and ever since we were working together, we were doing something fun. And um, then Sarah that's a lot of content for Erica and for Studio Sage. So we were always around each other. We helped each other, uh, you know, grow. Like uh, I would shoot her looks and um, she wants to learn photography. She really wants to uh, be able to produce her own content. So sometimes I help her with that. So we collaborate that way. Yeah. How are you as a teacher? Can you teach photography? Oh gosh, this is a completely different topic and I'm sure we would have to touch on it, but you know, again, like the first, the toughest thing I had to do back in the day is like resign from uh, being my, my dad's uh, employee. Now, the second toughest thing was to actually go on that stage and be in front of people and teach something. Yeah, it was my biggest fear from my early childhood. And as I look back, like I used to dance and I think pressure was so high for me that whenever we would go on stage, I would mess up and I would let the entire team down that made me so disappointed so i always had this fear of the crowd like crowd just does something to me physically i can feel my body just acting weird mm -hmm. so yeah i knew that you know i was kind of tiptoeing around this whole public speaking thing for a little bit and then um i just had a great idea and i thought and i thought that idea was greater than my fear and i wanted to see what's out there on the other side of the fear so um now i do teach photography so what I did, I pitched to Cosmoprof, and yeah, of course, I didn't go elsewhere. I went to like one of the biggest distributors. You know, <laughs> of ambition. Um, yeah, I'm going to steal that though. We're going to use that. And we're going to put that on the t-shirt. My fear is greater than, I mean, my idea is greater than my fear. I yeah. love that. That Thank is, you. yeah, I think so many people focus on the fear and not the idea. You know what I mean? So, but if you focus on the idea, and, and just, you know, that is greater than, than your fear. That, yeah, we're going to use that on a T-shirt. We'll, we'll put <laughs> Narina underneath of it. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it was, uh, it was really tough. Like, to me, to overstep that, it was, it was really complicated. And, you know, here, I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for Cosmoproof team. Like, I had baptized, baptism by fire 100%. And they didn't know if I taught before or not. Well, probably they suspected I haven't. But <laughs> they, you know, I was not like, I, I didn't try to hide it. I, I think I told them. 
But they were like, well, you're, you know, we like your curriculum. We like your class description. Just go out there and do it. And I'm like, what do you mean? But the beautiful thing about that, you know, you might think they might suspect it, but they were like, oh, you know, it, it could be the English, you know what I mean? The disconnect a little bit and you have an excuse for us. They were like, oh, these dudes are just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think this is when my uh, foreign uh, self really helps me get through like all kinds of doors just because I can, you know, people just let it slide because I'm a foreigner and yeah. Sometimes I don't, I underestimate it. I don't know what it does to me, but I believe it's playing a lot in my favor. But Megan, yeah, she had so much faith in me. She put me up on that stage and um, yeah. And ever since I was teaching and uh, the first time I was thinking, I'm just going to die, you know, because it was, I had so, I had full, full room. And also I knew there were people um, that had to supervise my class and see what it is about because they haven't heard it before. And I didn't know how many of those quote unquote import, important people were there. Like I would stress even more. But. So when you do your, your photography class, do you uh, also teach how to use it in social media? My class is connected to social media directly. Yes. It's how to create content for social media. That's a killer class, right? Oh my God. Yeah. So in that class, are you teaching like composition and lighting and like how to use like like to use or not to use like a ring light and stuff like you make it like real like like salon specific that's what i do that's exactly what i teach yes so we might have to skip out on a podcast or two in <laughs> mid-atlantic <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we have to go hang out with her yeah yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool megan's awesome you know what i mean and she's able to spot talent obviously you know mm -hmm. what i mean because it like like you said earlier if if those who haven't seen Darina's work go on Instagram and look at or social media all platforms social media and, and check her out and you know what I mean it's just it, it's amazing but to do it on and, and teach it how to do, use it on social media just takes it up to an, another level as well it's incredible actually you know because you also don't like I mentioned in her class now like truly interested because like you don't have a full studio to work in, in in most salons and stuff I mean I think that that's changing a little bit like I know when we were at our friend Jackie Davis's salon, she has like a full lighting system um, uh, there in the salon. But but for the most part, salons don't have that that access. So I'd love to be able to like learn how to get like awesome images, you know, out of you know just a just a workspace, right? We'll just go visit Sage. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> no, but the beauty of photography, and I think that's what hairdressers don't know, just because they're starting to learn a completely different craft, completely different medium. It's when you know what lighting does for you, you can really use it to your advantage. You don't always have to have a professional camera or you don't have to have equipment or lighting. You can just go out in the daylight. And if you know what you want from that light, you can use it to your advantage. You can create a killer shot. And that's what I'm trying to say through my class. I'm trying to inspire people, explore it. Like don't push too much, put too much pressure on yourself. I off, um, they asked me like, what is the perfect lighting? Well, there is no such thing. You know, there's all kinds of different lighting. All of them are good. I mean, it just different character of lighting creates different effect. Like, what do you want? So it's a, um, it's a slightly different perception of the craft. And of course I uh, give some of the useful advice and maybe a couple of shortcuts for hairdressers to use immediately. But my goal is to inspire them to um, look at their work at all kinds of different angles and different lighting situations and see what you can get because and in my class i show how that one ring light at a different angle can create a completely different effect and you know like what lighting do we use for men what do we use for women like what's important so you know i'm just trying to make them think outside the box don't stick to the ring light don't shoot through the ring forget about it just like go outside see how your hair looks in the bright sunlight in the shade What's the difference? What do you like about it? Because it's a personal style and preference too. So that's, that's what I'm trying to portray through, through my class. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. You yeah. know, I mean, the, the thing is too, and like we've talked about this on the podcast a little bit and, and I'll bring it back to the podcast is like, like before Tony and I started um, last January, you know, we, uh, we were talking to a microphone just driving in our car just to just to get comfortable just right? to get comfortable yeah because there was something that's weird that happened and i don't know if this happens with hair i mean with with photographers too but as soon as that mic turned on it was like a different part of your brain starts firing 
right? And then, and then you have to kind of deal, you have to wrestle with that part of your brain that's firing um, just to have relevant conversation, you know? Um, so like, again, for a couple months before we did the podcast, I would just talk into an open mic and I just kind of talked about my day. So it's kind of like, you don't have to release it, you know, like you can take right. the pictures and you don't have to release it. Right. And, and here's another thing, Dorina, that, that, that I think a lot of people miss is that, or you're starting to see a little bit more of it now is that like, it takes hundreds of shots to get the one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of people think that, that people just, oh, you know, take a couple of shots and that's it. But that's not how the game works at all. Yeah. And unfortunately for us, we don't have uh, 100 podcasts to get it right. We just get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to live with what, what we do. But you know, <laughs> and, and that's okay. That's okay not to be perfect from the get go. And I know creative people put so much pressure on themselves and, you know, like, oh my God, my colors don't look right in the picture. Well, I mean, I'm a professional photographer with experience and yes, my colors don't always look right either, but I use so much other tools. Like um, I use color checkers, digital targets to tell my camera what it's looking at, to tell computer what my camera was looking at. It's a very complex process. So like if your phone can't deliver proper color, don't get upset. I mean, I'm getting frustrated too. So like, don't put pressure on yourself. It's a learning experience. Like take it easy and it's okay to not be perfect from the get-go, you will improve. Like photography, the beauty of it is that quantity transitions into quality. <laughs> quality. Yeah. So yeah. no pressure, just exploration. Well, I love that. Exploration. Yeah. Have you ever like, have you ever made the perfect shot? Like have you, have you yet to get that picture that you're like, everything's perfect about this? No. And I'm thinking I never will. I uh, and it's not, of and it's not because I'm not like happy with what it turned out. It's, um, I mean, there are different kinds of work I do. You know, there's commercial, I do advertising campaigns. They have their own goals. I work for artists. That's a totally different story. But for me, I do conceptual beauty. I really like to use beauty as a, uh, what is it called? As a tool uh-huh. or as a mechanism in order to deliver my message. So some of my work just, you know, has a social message. I had a project that was um, aimed to bring awareness to domestic abuse. Um, and one of my goals, and I spoke to PBA about it because of their cut it out uh, program, I want to recreate it and make it more complex because I think it's an important topic to talk about. But um, for me, a perfect shot is the one that speaks to the audience, ones that audience can understand. And technically, photo may not be perfect because honestly, perfection is boring. The beauty is in perfection. Like we are not perfect. Our faces are not completely symmetrical. Like, you know, and there's a beauty of it because our imperfection is unique. So with my photography, I would feel like photo is successful when it can communicate with my audience, when there is a dialogue. Um, And I would be completely happy with it. And if it's a little shabby around the corners, well, uh, or a little rough, it's totally fine because that's, it makes it uh, more real. It makes it more unique. Um, So I don't think there is such thing as, as a perfect image. Okay. Walk me through this. So, you know, we just talked about how you do, you know, you'll do a few hundred, maybe thousands of shots on your subject. So as you're going through there, you know, you're only releasing like a couple of those. So how do you find the one that is going to communicate with the audience? Like if you kind of remove yourself out of it, like how does that, how do you know what that shot is? Uh, it's a great question because I think that's what every hairdresser should ask themselves when they select their photos and that will really help them pick the best one. Well, um, the one that communicates is actually the one that's telling a story and that may sound super cliche, but um, when I, I just go through a bunch of pictures really fast and the one that really stands out to me, like that's one. And probably it's like a little turn on the, like it's in the mom, in the micro expressions, you know, mm-hmm. my brain just catches it. My brain knows what's real, what's not. And when it's super staged, it's a little stiff and boring and it doesn't appeal, but when it's real, you know it. So um, I would say if you, have 100 pictures to pick from, how do you pick the best one? Just go through them really fast and whichever like jumps out at you, that's a good one. I like that advice a lot. Yeah, that's, yeah, fantastic advice. Do you, um, do you shoot, like when you shoot, do you, are you taking like lots and lots and lots of pictures? Uh, like- it really depends on what exactly I'm shooting when it comes to hair. Yes, absolutely. Especially like my, 
my specialty became hair movement. Uh, so when we want to get that perfect pattern, yes, absolutely. I have to take a hundred shots and maybe one is good. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely when it comes to movement, I take a lot of shots because not only I want a beautiful hair pattern, I want a perfect shot when the model is feeling it and the hair is flowing and you know, it all comes together in the story. Like I can, I look at this girl and I want to be her because she presents or portrays something that I'm lacking. You know, like I want to be a part of that whimsical world. So yeah, like it's a hundred shots for sure. If not a thousand <laughs> for hairstyle. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. We um speaking about models, do you find that it's uh, more uh, do you prefer just like regular girls or or professional models or or does it just it, that that is that doesn't matter? Uh, it does matter. Well, I think I think I'm in a very unique place because I don't have any prejudice. You know, I will work with quote unquote real people. You know, that's what they're called uh, in the professional world. <laughs> yeah, opposed to models. Um, models are great because uh, they have experience, they can deliver poses, right? There's a good starting point, and then you can lead them to whatever you're trying to convey through their likeness. But because of hairdressing, I had to train myself really quick to work with a person with no experience and make them deliver. And it's a communication thing, and I think um, it's a great skill because once I can nail that, I can work with professional model. It's like no brainer, you know? So I like both, um, but it's not about whether or not person has experience. It's about their appearance. I really like unique faces. I like uh, big eyes, small lips, small chin or big lips and small, you know, like I like all kinds of skin tones because from we all look the same and i didn't have a chance to photograph so yes yeah, like i said in america i have this just great opportunity to work with all kinds of cultural backgrounds and different likeness uh and just really enjoy the diversity something that i would never be able to do back in ukraine so you're saying there's no people of diversity in the ukraine very little. just all blonde hair blue eyes well i'm not a very typical ukrainian look but we're normally dark hair dark eyes but ukraine is um has been invaded so many times throughout the history so then we all look different but it's still the same kind of structure of the face similar um uh, vibe i want to say back in ukraine there is no way i would be able to photograph an african girl or an indian girl or, or a girl from japan and here i can do it and i just really enjoy um all all kinds of different faces and and, and likeness I kind of want to jump back to like not only America, but like even like bring it down a little bit, dude. What's going on in Jacksonville? <laughs> Those artists in Jacksonville are incredible. Like she brought up Erica, and we brought up Sarah Jane, and we and 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 Updo Guru, Casey Powell, and Sammy Skinner, and I mean Sam good, Sam Via Sam Via. I know, like just. How did Jacksonville like get all these artists and Don't stuff? Don't sleep man? on us, huh? We were brewing, brewing in the meantime. That's right. That's right. Dude, you you yeah. are not kidding, like. Every time I see a, um, this great piece of art, I look and I go, oh, Jacksonville, of course. Well, so. it's because they get to work all year round because, you know, three or four months of the year, we got to go hibernate. <laughs> That's right. We can't shoot outside in the winter. That's right. <laughs> Our models freeze. <laughs> Ukrainian summers out there. Yeah. <laughs> Freezing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's, yeah. I, I, I really can't wait to, to meet up with you and. Uh, take your class. <laughs> I'm going to take your class too. So your class is going to be available at, did you say all the Cosmoprof or are you just going to a few this year? Um, no, I'm doing an entire year with them. Yeah. Uh, so at every Cosmoprof class you'll be there? Or the, and then, so like when you go to Premiere and stuff, will you be with Cosmoprof as well? well or are you Premier just going? Premiere is different you know? uh, because uh, I, I'm not going to be teaching at Premiere. I'll probably be working as a photographer, possibly for Cosmoprof, maybe for another brand. So premiere is slightly different for me, but all other shows um, starting. Maybe hair industry. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the other shows uh, uh, by Cosmoprof, I'll be teaching there. Yeah. That's awesome. So if I'm a, so if I want to win a Naha award, how does one get in touch with Darina? Um, through social media, DM. Uh, there's my email, um, a phone number. Yeah. Which oh, we're not gonna put your phone number out there. <laughs> My up. husband is not gonna like that, so let's not do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Darina, what's your email address? It's contact at darinabarikina.com, <laughs> which doesn't get any easier, right? <laughs> Spelling wise. No, yeah, you should probably spell that out. Uh, okay, so contact at d a r y n a 
B-A-R-Y-K-I-M-A.com. You got that, Tony? Yep. I can't even spell that. <laughs> when, she, when she spells it for us, I can't even spell it. Well, Darina, um, I, I think I can speak for Tony and I. We're huge, huge fans of your work. Um, you've got such a unique eye, uh, uh, photography-wise. Your, 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 your photography is amazing. Your yeah, I, Nahas, I, I, I'm uh, so glad that our industry is able to be blessed by you. Yeah, I, 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 I am as well. By the way, yeah, I loved, I loved your like your uh, your queen uh, uh, the images. Like when you have the queen, the cards. Have you seen this? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll show you after the thing. But go to Dorina's page, and you're gonna see like these. They're like playing cards. They're these queen playing cards, and it's just really, really super cool. Oh what yeah, you, I have seen those. You have, yeah, yeah. They're they're very, very cool. It's an ongoing but, uh, thing. I plan on doing other characters too. So hopefully, <laughs> one day it'll be a complete deck. <laughs> If you need a uh, a beard at King. Yes, yep, yeah, absolutely. I was looking at you guys and you say, "Oh, we're going to be your class." I'm like, "I'm going to make you model for me cuz I normally have like a little demo." So, yeah. <laughs> There's the opportunity right here. I can turn ugly into okay. That's awesome. Hey, you know what? We need headshots, so you know, better better yet doing it's it with Karina. opportunity, Karina. right? <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> That's so incredible. Well, yeah. Ms. Darina, thank you for your time. Thank you for your afternoon. And, and, and again, like Tony said, thank you so much for being in our industry because your yeah. eye is, is just incredible. And, you know, and congratulations uh, on the collab with Sarah and the Naha Award. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, again, Ms. Darina, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Hey, hey, so there it is. Hey, this is a message that um, we've been trying to bring, I don't know, for the last couple of months, actually since we started the podcast. Hey, so if you like the podcast or if you find that it's useful, please, please, please leave us a review, a five-star review on iTunes. Um, leave us a rating and a review. But if you don't like it, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally forget about this message. We also want to thank Sarah and Blaine from Pretty Gritty. Uh, Sarah and Blaine, they are a band out of uh, Portland, Oregon, and we just want to thank them very much for allowing us to use their song, Pleased to Meet You, on our podcast. Um, that's cool. I think you can find... Actually, you can. You can find their music on um, on iTunes. Peace and hair grease. <laughs>